So my name's Hazel Hutchison. I'm an artist from the Midlands um, and I work with experimental and alternative photographic methods and installation. I've got a particular focus in um, uh, alternative photographic methods such as capital or plant-based development and materiality. Um, so my top uh, my practice explores like topics of landscape, domesticity and identity. And my most recent artwork, Root, has focused on looking at natural adaptations and sort of learning from nature's resilience. And I've been using this connection to nature to like express emotions and a desire to adapt after challenges in my life. My, so my latest work's called Root and um, I called it this because it's got a related terminology to the word in the phrase in nature and also it could mean like path and journey. And this is essentially what the whole project was about. Um, it's based on a, like me having a, tra a traumatic surgical experience in 2019. And um, it was sort of examining my own like sort of like um, mental and bodily like fragility um, after this experience. And it was also so showing sort of like a mental recovery from being expired by walks out in nature and sort of seeing natural adaptations out there um, and I kind of would draw this um, how like external factors sort of affect appearance and then I would draw from that like um, like relate that to my own body after the surgical experience so what I would do is I'd sort of see a shape out in nature and I would then go and reenact that with my body indoors um, to sort of show, show a way to this connection and sort of show like an almost admiration of nature to have this kind of like naturally occurring resilience. Um, yeah, there's this certain tree is where it all started. It was in, it was a tree sort of in the Peak District. And I sort of was walking out there when I was um, outside like in like a local walking destination sort of during lockdown. And um, it was sort of bent over by the wind and it was this tree and it was like all bent out of shape. And it was sort of this tree that inspired me to be like, oh, I've got like this sort of affinity with it. <laughs> I kind of felt quite sorry for it. So it was that that sort of triggered me to want to then like have this, have, like create this whole series of photographs um, sort of showing like side by side me and like nature but I'd like so sort of separately because it's showing like obviously like in lockdown we we're indoors but then also we've got like a lot of us had this uh, desire to go out walking so it's kind of like I wanted to show the separateness as well. <laughs> the way I created these photographs was through a um, photographic technique called caffeinel and caffeinel is used it's it's this um it's a process where you use household ingredients to develop photographs rather than standard photographic developer so and it, it's all using like like coffee washing soda and vitamin c so it literally every, like all things you can find in your cupboard and i was I, when i found out about this process i was really like blown away i was like wow you can create it just using these simple ingredients and you can create photographs where I can't really tell the difference between that and standard developer. I mean, maybe a little bit more contrast, but um, it then opened like a whole other world into like, you could develop like using lemon balm or like uh, nettles or, you know, lots of different um, ingredients rather than just using this um, standard developer, which, after my surgery, I was kind of hesitant to use because I found out it like had quite harmful chemicals in. Um, I was having to create like all this work at home as well. So I was conscious of what I was putting down the drain. And I was, uh, yeah, so I was, I was quite conscious about what I was, what I was using. Um, it was really fun as well. It was almost like some scientific experiment. You, it feels, you know, you're mixing uh, <laughs> the, the coffee together and, um, so it was, it was really exciting to see what I could sort of create. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's quite big now. It's quite a, a lot of photographers using this as a way forward to sort of ensure like the future of film photography. So it's really exciting to sort of be using this process like going forward. Um, and then 
I decided I didn't want to just display like photographs just flat on paper like I was thinking right how can I show this sort of journey that I went through and how can I show like this sort of like it's almost a quite a personal sensitive subject so I decided I wanted to show it on glass and glass to me was because obviously spending so much time behind glass and looking through glass I kind of did want to display this like sort of almost like ghostly sculpture like so you look through it um and then I did it on different lights like different types of glass so like I had some on like warm glass to represent like sort of a warm light and some on cold glass to represent a cool light um and yeah I think I think glass is one of those materials that can represent a, like different things to different people um I think yeah a, a lot of um, people could sort of relate to the idea of wanting to get out in nature during lockdown so so that's yeah so that was the two different processes I used um I got into glass because my dad actually was a glass artist when I was younger and I used to watch him making glass jewelry and he taught me how to glass cut <laughs> um so so yeah um I've been Perhaps in different glass cutting techniques as well so a lot of different processes are involved like in the final making of the sculpture um but it also was my final MA university work as well um so I, I was studying my MA all, throughout this whole two years of not actually being able to go into university so I feel like a lot of these skills I've learned like for myself really trying to trying to push myself it's trying to push me basically to learn different things and like look into different things um so yeah I've, I've really enjoyed like making this piece of work <laughs> yeah I kind of thought as well like because they were quite solid these like into the table mm. it almost looked like a building horizon line as well yeah. so it's got this idea of like strength but the fact it's very breakable um mm. the process of what I did when I fired into the glass. It's not using liquid emulsion. Like I, I did look into a liquid emulsion, but I actually did want something that was quite permanent into the glass. It's been burnt into the glass like it won't. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's using ceramic transfers. Mm. So it's so it's like embedded into the glass, like permanently, really. <laughs> it was yeah, a lot of trial and error, actually. I didn't really know it was gonna work when I first did it, but um, yeah, it's, you can't scratch off the surface it's it's quite solidly on there mm. um yeah um I just had to find a few glass pla pa places to, to like hot air burn it for me because I haven't got a kiln at the moment I had just recently finished the um quad and format fellowship at quad gallery in Derby um and I'm sort of doing a collaboration with another artist called Mr Mina mm. so we currently are working on a new project um I think we might have an exhibition possibly we're not sure yet with current restrictions but hopefully something soon with that um again it's to sort of do with the idea of um I was thinking about grandeur <laughs> because I found it quite funny that I was taking sort of like these grand landscape photographs but again coming home and developing them with chemicals <laughs> like sort of real yeah. household items so I'm sort of doing a project sort of based on like this kind of juxtaposition between the two. Um, I think it's just to experiment because I really enjoy, I think it's not to get so fixated necessarily with the final result, but maybe just try different processes and just think about like how are they relating, like the concept and the material it's made out of. Um, because sometimes I do see quite a lot of um, like sort of landscape photography work but then it's produced using like color photography and sometimes I'm like oh okay it's like harmful to the environment but then the final result you know the message that you're sending out slightly different um so yeah I think that's my only bit of advice really just keep experimenting and thinking about the material 